So one of the things that I've uh, noticed, well, let's just do the problem and then I'll talk about it. It says find the linear speed of a point traveling at a constant speed along the circumference of a circle with a radius of 48 feet. So immediately, I'm going to sketch my little image. So this is a circle, and it's a radius r equals 48 feet. And so there's some little point. What they're saying is there's a point that is going... I don't know why they didn't say car or planet or moon or whatever, but they just set a point. And they uh, they also told us that the angular velocity was 7 pi uh, over 25 radians per second. And we need to calculate, let's just find the linear speed. So... I know I explained this in class, but it is possible you don't remember this off the top of your head, but there is a relationship between linear speed and angular speed. Um, so what we could do is that was, I'm, I'm going into the, the, uh, the unit document that shows all the lessons that we did. And so 3.3 is where we calculated linear and angular speed. So if you don't remember how to do this stuff, this is what you're supposed to do when you study for a test. You look at your notes. And so I am in 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 this example, I am given a radius, right? And so I'm just going to jot these things down. I'm given a radius which is 48 feet I'm given an angular speed, omega is equal to 7 pi over 25 radians per second. And then I'm asked to find the linear speed, which is v, right? Because we usually refer to velocity. So that's your linear speed. And there is a formula that we derived in class that connects the two, right? And if you don't remember it, go to your notes. Well, that's based on the arc length. And I remember somewhere we actually kind of connected the two. I just don't remember where. So I go and I look through the notes. And what do you notice? In this particular problem, we created a formula where the linear speed is equal to the radius times the angular speed, right? And there was a derivation that we did. I think it was on, yeah. So this is the derivation, and it's just a fancy math word that says that we made a formula use another formula, right? And so what is the derivation? Well, it's this right here. Now, you don't necessarily need to look at all this stuff. This is the relationship between the linear speed, the radius, and the angular speed. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do. Just thumb through your notes till you see it. And so to find v, my linear speed, I just need to take the radius and multiply it by the angular speed, which is 48 feet Right, uh, times the angular speed, which is 7 pi um, over 25. And that's basically it. Uh, but this is radians per second. So let me... Let me write that this way. So this is radians per second. So if you do the math on that, um, and we want to leave it as an exact value, I think somebody double check this on the calculator. I think 47 or 48 times uh, seven is 336, 
Can somebody double check that? Okay. And so we'll just say 336 pi over 25 um, radians per, not radians, it's feet. Feet per second. And since this particular question didn't ask me like a lot of specifics, like we could convert it to miles per hour. Some of you probably did, maybe you did, I don't know. You could do the decimal, that's fine. I'll know, I, what I'm really looking for when I go to do this is, do you, did you know that the linear speed is actually the radius times the <coughs> angular speed? Now, if you converted this to miles per hour, um, and you made a mistake there, you know, I'll let you know. But for the most part, this is what I'm looking for. So if you get this right, you're going to get most of the points. Okay. Or on the real test, I might actually specify what unit I want it to be in. But if they don't specify, you just kind of leave it as it is.